All right, all right. So welcome back to Studio 39, a.k.a. The Bear Cave. I'm Rob Odie. This is Spotlight 39. Just like every time, we got another young man with another story to share. Before we get into it, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications because we're dropping new content every single day. Comment down below. Tell me who you want to have on the show. Now that that's out the way, man, let's have some fun. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what you do, and we'll go from there. Floor is yours. Hey, uh, I'm Neil Gill. I attend Falston High School, graduating class of 21, and I just recently committed to University of Maryland to play tight end there. Fantastic. So University of Maryland, right? So staying in state. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a yep. little curious on, uh, you know, how that decision came about. So we'll get to that in a, a few minutes, man. Um, but being in Maryland, you uh, you were not fortunate enough to have a senior football season so far. Mm. Hopefully that's changed. Have you guys uh, started practice or, or what is that looking like for you guys right now? Well, unfortunately, it turns out we might be the only county not playing in Maryland. Uh, it looks like recently our superintendent, he decided for some reason that we would be too out of shape and it'd be dangerous for us, which really? is, you know, it's kind of up in the, like, everybody's mad, of course, I think, because we will be the only county not playing them because they're all going to start. Baltimore County started already. They're, they already started practice and stuff. They got their pads out. So it looks like Harper County will be only spring sports starting March, and we're going to go back to school in March. So that wow. that's unfortunate. Yeah, so fingers crossed something changes from now until then. Um... But nonetheless, you've had an extended um, off season, right? So you've yeah. had the, the the quarantine COVID workout schedule. Uh, so what have you been doing to to prepare yourself for this year or for this season with the extension that you've had? Um, you know, what has been some some key focus areas for you? Well, so for about a year, year now, I've been training at Spartan Sports and Wellness in Bel Air, Maryland, and they've trained a lot of. D1 athletes, and I'm currently working out with another Maryland commit too, Roman Hemby. He's a three-star commit going uh, cool. from John Crow in Maryland. And, you know, this offseason, uh, you know, if you play D1 tight end, you, you know, got to be able to move, block, do it all pretty much. So I've just working on, you know, being, getting a little more agile, strong at the same time, you know, working on like core lifts, again, the core movement mechanics down, being able to move, but, you know, staying powerful at the same time where you're not just like a blocking tight end. You still need to be able to make make good moves catch make people miss okay fair enough fair enough um so let's think about this right so you haven't had a football season this year so let's kind of take it back to last season right uh what were some things that really went well your junior year um and then obviously on the flip side you know what are some things that you learned so it sounds like you know your overall agility uh and, and just working on the footwork and, and being you know more explosive per se but is there anything else that you you recognize that you know you could have done a little differently uh, last year, you know, going into this season. Yeah, for sure. I mean, before junior year started, I wasn't really expecting to play college football that all that much. Okay. And then this was, this was my first year at varsity tight end as well. I was playing tackle before this. Really? I just happened to, you know, lose a good amount of weight. And then we had a, our tight end coach who came in. He's currently a practice squad member of the Jets. Okay. And he plays Stony Brook as well. And he kind of really helped me, you know, switch positions, you know, really work at, finding the space and i i honestly i really wasn't in like really really good shape as i am now like i, I wish i would have worked worked harder and worked out before junior year you ready for varsity but like once i once i really got comfortable playing and catching the ball i think i did pretty well i my hands got soft and i was able to really just find open space and make good plays and block oh man that's huge so um you said that this was your first year on varsity. So junior year was first year on varsity mm -hmm. and first year you kind of really took the game serious from the sounds of it. Yeah. Not, not maybe not necessarily serious, but more serious to the point where you thought, you know what, maybe I can do this at the next level. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what was, uh, you know, let's kind of start talking about the recruiting process. If you don't mind, like what was the breakthrough moment for you? Um, at what point did you, you know, get that first blessing and that first conversation from a, from a coach? Well, basically, I I made my film after the season shortly ended, and then I was like, I think this should be taken seriously. So I decided, you know, take a break from basketball that year, just work on my, like, you know, reach out to coaches, getting better, weight room, recording videos, showing coaches. Okay. So, like, I think my – so automatic, right away I had, just from my size, being able to say I'm 6'4", 6'5", 230, 6'4", 240, I was able to get, you know, D2, D3 looks. And then, like – as slowly as those started building up, I'd say around, like right around when COVID hit, 
March, April, May. That's when the you know, FCS coaches started to really hit me up, and I got a few scholarships there. Okay. And then, and then you know, as you post those, more coaches will see you. You know, you're getting offers, and then I started getting more followers from those coaches. And then, the first like FBS school that saw me was Toledo, and that's like where like the bit like you know, G five P- Power Five group schools really started to see me after Toledo happened. Okay. So when you say um, you know, you you started off with some some D two D three offers. And then they moved into the FCS level. Uh, what were some of the FCS programs that reached out? And then, you know, were they full offers? Were they PWOs? What, you know, what did they look like? Well, right off the bat, it was mainly schools on the East Coast around like okay. New England. So it was um, Bryant, Delaware was in there too, Fordham, and uh, Holy Cross were the first four. Okay. They really got to me. And then Bryant did give me a scholarship. Fordham was a PWO, Holy Cross was a scholarship, and then Delaware was a PWO as well. Okay. And then it moved into the FBS level. Toledo came knocking. Mm-hmm. Full ride, PWO. How was that? They were a PWO with a full academic scholarship. Okay. So so still scholarship worthy, right? Mm-hmm. And then it, it ultimately, you know, kind of roller coastered from there mm-hmm. or domino effect, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then at what point did uh, Maryland come calling? I mean, it's actually a pretty funny story. So I was getting ready to commit to Toledo or maybe an FCS school. And then, you know, one day I was like, I should just email the coaches. I haven't really talked to Maryland coaches that much. It's my home state. So I emailed Coach Miller, the tight end coach. Next day, he DM me on Twitter, gave me his phone number. We just started started FaceTiming and talking. And eventually got to the point where it was like, I want you to stay home, come play for us, stay in state. Okay. And you know, that, that just came out of nowhere. And I was like, I, I, I'm going to take this, you know, it's, I get to play for my home state, put on for the state, you know, very cool. It's kind so of busting out of nowhere. Yeah. In, in Maryland, uh, is that full ride or is that PWO for Maryland? That's full ride. Full ride. So look, man, congratulations. Uh, that's, that's pretty remarkable, right? So mm-hmm. you go from not necessarily taking it as serious as you are now yeah. to, uh, you know, losing some weight and getting in better football shape and probably just better shape in general. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you start to get some looks and some interest. And then it just kind of spirals from there. Come full circle. You're staying mm-hmm. home. And you're going to play for the University of Maryland Power 5 program. Yeah. All in a matter of, what, less than a year. Yeah. I mean, it was super out of nowhere. I mean, like, when I before junior year started, I was never expecting my college football. Some coaches brought it up to me. But I was like, no, nah, I'm this really isn't for me. And then once I really – the season finished, I was like, hey, this is something I can play at the next level. So – I just took it seriously and ended up here. And that's huge. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a story I like to hear, man. Yeah. Uh, I've had tons of stories on the show. I think that's probably the first one that, that happened so fast with so much going on. Um, I mean, you literally went from, you know, a D3 opportunity to a, a full-blown P, you know, Power 5, full-blown scholarship. Uh, so, again, congratulations. That's big. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, especially COVID made it. Recruiting for everybody we got worse. Dead periods everywhere. You know, some kids are like, I don't, I don't well, because you know that ex, an extra year of eligibility. So all these kids are like, man, my scholarships are gone. Even like PWOs, they couldn't get PWOs either. Yep. So I mean, it really just came out of nowhere, and I was so grateful for the, whatever the Maryland coach were able to give me that chance. So, so did you commit on the spot, or did you take time to think about it a little bit? I mean, I took a little bit of time. Good. Because I, I just want to come in the spot, and I didn't even see the campus yet, but I was okay. already starting to lean towards there. Because my parents were like, I think this is something you need to do. Because, you know, I was ready to commit to a G- group five school or FCS. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I was like, Maryland Power Five, I get to, you know, develop and really learn. Because, you know, in Hartford County, I, can, I mean, I can admit, like, there isn't a super load of talent here. It's mainly around, like, Baltimore and, like, you know, around – Damatha, where Brian Brisey came from. Oh yeah, I mean, the, the they Matha they Florida they really be St. Francis, Baltimore area. That's where their area really comes from. Like, yeah. we've only had two Power Five kids in the last forty years from our school. Really? Yeah. So, so you made the list. <laughs> my man, my man. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, so speaking of school, right? So I appreciate taking me down memory road. Um, but let's get into school, right? So obviously, you got the academic scholarship uh, as mm-hmm. part of a as an opportunity early on. So. I'm going to assume you have the grades, but mm. what what does the grades look like? How are they? Uh, I think right. I my coma GPA is about a four point four. Okay. 
And then yeah. on the S- SAT, four, four, right? Yeah, SAT at uh, 1360. Okay. So mm-hmm. academics and line, you know, more yeah. than line. Um, you got the talent, right? And, and now you, you, you've got the clear picture that this is for you. Uh, and now you get to go out there and play some ball on Saturdays for at sure. home and all your family and friends, yeah. COVID pending, get to come and see you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's pretty remarkable, man. Uh, let's do this though. Let's kind of shift gears away from the whole student athlete piece because, mm. uh, you know, we can see all that online, right? We get a, yeah. a pretty good idea of who you are as a student athlete. Uh, but what we can't see, uh, is who you are as a person, right? So we, we can't judge your character. We can't do any of that, um, based off your social media or we can, but it may not be very accurate. Right. So, uh, this is a great opportunity for you to just kind of share who you are outside of being a student athlete, man. Who are you outside of the game when you're not working out, when you're not talking football, playing football, you know, playing a football video game, right? When you're not doing any of those things, hmm. what are you involved with? What do you like to do? Who are you? Well, I, right, for the last three years, I've been a pretty big part of like student government or county government. Okay. So I, I'm, the vi- I'm the vice president of Falston High School right now. And then I'm also a member of like the county executive board where I get to like help them make decisions and see what's going on. So I got to, I, so you might be able to sway the vote for football then, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, I had a meeting with the superintendent a little bit and he just gave me his reasonings and okay. I've been, I've been trying to work with some other guys to see like what we can do to try to sway it. And then on the other side of stuff, like um, my fa- I'm, I'm an Indian, I'm Indian. My family's Indian. So, you know, family is pretty important for us. So, you know, we celebrate as much as we can, you know, like our traditions. And then when, when football comes around, I mean, you can say there's not a lot of Indians, you know, in football. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was a pretty big deal for us. And, you know, we really got to, I mean, it's definitely it was something, through, yeah, it was really something new, hour five, which is awesome. So it was something new for like my parents. Cause before it was just school, school, school. Cause yeah. my parents, they're from, they're, they're born in India. Okay. So what they were always taught, you know, we need to focus on school all the time. That's what I did. And then football came around. So that just made things a little bit easier. And, you know, we really just, we were, were pretty grateful for like what we were able to get this year. Yeah, man. That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Do you do any, uh, community involvement? Uh, any, you know, I guess, yeah, youth group or anything like that? Uh, the past, this summer got cut short because of COVID, but I normally a volunteer at the Upper Chesapeake Medical Center, the UMD okay. Sports. I normally work in like the ER ear department sometimes in birthing center i i just like you know the volunteering there is pretty it's a good way to like learn a few things you know stay focused you get to learn a lot like st- you know just to because it's not it's not that easy there and you're volunteering your time and they expect you to do your best so like as a 17 or 18 year old it really was something like a new challenge but it's also enjoyable at the same time be able to help out these doctors and yeah. patients and seeing all these people so you're super involved is what you're telling me, right? You yeah. Little, I, mm. little of this, a little of that. Yeah. Spice in a little, you know, student government, local government. Um, so look, man, again, I appreciate you sharing your story. I appreciate you taking me down memory road. Uh, I think your story can be pretty powerful and I think it can inspire, you know, others, mm. you know, in like situations, right? Um, because, you know, I've had several guests on the show that, you know, have zero offers and they're still looking for that first blessing. Mm. And then I've got young men that, you know, can pretty much walk on to whatever school they want. And everybody's story is a little different, but I think when we share stories, it can help others uh, in a positive way. So I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to do that. Uh, super excited to get this out there, you know, for, for everybody, mm-hmm. you know, that tuned in for a sneak peek on Twitter. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool because we're going to release the episode, uh, you know, in a few days. Uh, but with that being said, man, you know, I'm going to wish you luck. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get the link up at some point. You know, I'm not too far down the road, uh, yeah. you know, and I'm a, Personally, I'm a Gophers fan because I have ties to, to the University of Minnesota. Mm. So uh, hopefully we get the link up at some point during your Maryland career. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you for so, having man. me. Yeah. So for all the viewers out there, please continue to do what you do. Subscribe, share, comment. Tell me who you want on the show. All that fun stuff. Let's blow this up. Until next time, I'm Rob Odie. This is Spotlight 39. I appreciate you, my man. All right. Thank you.